What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 and Bungie news. As always, Bungie like to get themselves in a little bit of drama, so we'll discuss the latest there. But we also have updates regarding future content leading up to Revenant, which of course is the second episode for Destiny 2. There's a kind of loose content roadmap that we have outlined right here for some of the stuff that we're going to see over the next few weeks. That includes variations on the Encore mission. There are actually different versions of this mission that we'll get access to, which is interesting, as well as some hidden future rewards. But additionally, we've got sandbox tuning that's going to be happening through September and various unlocks. Plus, we'll talk a little bit about Marathon, an interesting turn of events on that front, and Bungie have actually removed or privated the Vidoc that revealed a bunch of information about the game. And that's because of some of the recent news regarding Chris Barrett, who was formerly the game director for Marathon. Plus, there are a couple of other minor Bungie updates in the video which we'll talk about. So, as always, guys, I hope you find the update useful. And if you do, a rating below very much helps us on the channel. But now, Let's get into it. And firstly, I wanted to speak a little bit about the content layout and a sort of roadmap for the remainder of the content leading up to the first week in October, which is when Revenant will drop. And firstly, now that Act 3 is live, of course, we've got access to the exotic mission. That's actually going to get various different updates and some new rewards that we'll be able to earn in the next couple of weeks. One of the first things to mention is that Encore actually has three different variants according to the database. So the version that we've jumped into in this past week is the initial exotic exotic mission version of it, and that's Encore Overture. And we'll be revisiting Encore to get the catalyst upgrades and things throughout the rest of this season. But we'll also be heading back into Encore for some of the story steps, and there will actually be more story content that will unlock through this mission as well. So another version of the mission is called Encore Concerto, where we need to disrupt the conductor's violent experiments to gather data on the Vex Collective. Plus there is Encore Coda, where we'll ultimately put an end to the conductor's plans to convert souls. So the conclusion, or finale for episode one will also take place inside of Encore, which is interesting. And we started to discover this week various different secrets and elements that look like future puzzles that'll unlock. Plus, there are a couple of emblems that we've seen previously, which will actually drop from hidden challenges in future weeks. So we've got all of those to look forward to. But starting September 3rd, of course, we'll get the second catalyst for the Choir of One, which will be destabilizing rounds. Much like the first catalyst, there'll be a quest from Banshee for that one, but also from September 3rd, we'll get the next Nessus research quest, which is Ness 08. But another thing that we'll get access to on the week of September 3rd, and Bungie are trying this kind of sword event, I guess, where all swords in the heavy ammo slot will regenerate ammo for an entire week. So that will run up until September 10th. And Bungie have said they'll effectively have infinite heavy ammo in seasonal content, strikes, nightfalls, and that includes Grandmasters, but also Gambit, the relic game mode in Crucible, and Legend and Master Lost sectors. But they also say that four seasonal or challenges during this time will be focused on getting kills with swords in some of those activities. So if you fancy ever so slightly breaking the game with some infinite ammo swords, then that's something to look out for with the next reset. And no, unfortunately, it doesn't apply to Ergo Sum, but it could be pretty fun nonetheless. So let us know if that's of interest in the comment section. But other things to keep in mind, recently Bungie spoke about ability tuning and some updates that'll come for Hunters. So in update 8054, which Bungie say is planned for early September, they're making a bunch of changes to Threaded Spectre, as well as Swarm Grenades and Smoke Bombs. You can see those changes on screen, we won't go into all of them again right here as we've spoken about them previously, but with this being early September, presumably that means it will either drop the week of September 3rd or possibly the following week on September 10th. Speaking of the reset on September 10th though, that will be when we get the finale or the final steps of the story quest for Echoes. So that's probably when we'll see that final variant of the Encore mission. And it will also drop the last research quest for Failsafe. So as far as we know, it is essentially the finale for Echoes, but we'll also earn the Onslaught refit for Choir of One that week as well. So the next fortnight will be reasonably busy, but another component to look forward to in September will be the 10th anniversary event for Destiny 2. Now D1 originally launched on the 9th of September 2014, and the closest date to that is September 10th, or at least that'll be the closest weekly reset. So it seems possible that the 10th anniversary event will begin on that date as well. And as we've seen, there'll be a new armor set that we can earn, as well as some secrets in the Pale Heart that we'll discover by opening chests. And potentially there'll be some extra rewards thrown in there as well. So assuming that drops by mid-September, it will really only leave a couple of weeks, two or three weeks until the launch of Revenant, which is episode two. And so the update cadence in itself at least, will keep 
things reasonably busy. And so that's a sort of quick look at the roadmap or the calendar of events that we're going to see in the next few weeks in Destiny 2. And let us know any things that you're particularly looking forward to down in the comment section. Another bit of news I wanted to touch on today though, and kind of more drama for Bungie in a way, although it actually relates to Chris Barrett, who was the game director for Marathon, and he'd previously directed expansions for Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, and played a significant role in the general sort of direction and overall concept for some of Bungie's major titles in the past 10 years. So there's been some significant news this week because Chris Barrett, it turns out, was actually terminated and no longer works at Bungie, and we'd sort of caught on to that over the past couple of months. But there wasn't much detail as to why it had happened. But Jason Schreier from Bloomberg had shared that Chris Barrett was indeed fired after a misconduct investigation. So he says Chris Barrett was fired this spring after he was accused by several female employees of inappropriate behavior, according to people familiar with the matter. Chris Barrett had started at Bungie in 1999, so he's been there for a long time and also served on Bungie's board before the company was bought by Sony. But behind the scenes, Barrett was terminated following an internal investigation in which at least eight female employees raised complaints earlier this year that he had behaved inappropriately toward them. And the investigation found that Barrett called lower level female employees attractive and had asked them to play truth or dare and had made references to his wealth and power within the studio, suggesting that he could help advance their careers. And Chris Barrett did actually give a statement to Bloomberg News and had said, I feel that I've always conducted myself with integrity and been respectful and supportive of my colleagues, many of whom I consider my closest friends. And it added that he never understood that communication had been unwanted and said I would have never thought they could possibly have made anyone feel uncomfortable. But if anyone felt that way about their interaction with me, I am truly sorry. So that's what Chris Barrett had, had to say on the subject. Of course, Sony and Bungie have yet to comment on it, but reports had indicated that Barrett would essentially befriend female employees at the studio in various departments and then send them barrages of messages that blurred the lines between professional and personal. And multiple female staff had suggested that the advances were unwanted and that they found felt uncomfortable because Barrett was significantly more powerful than they were within the company. And Bloomberg actually reviewed some of the flirtatious messages that were sent by Bungie employees discussing this issue, and they haven't shared what has been said, but apparently within the studio, Bungie employees weren't told about the circumstances behind Barrett's departure, and members of the Marathon team were informed earlier this year by management that Chris Barrett was on a sabbatical, but they later discovered that his accounts had been disabled, and in the time since, of course, folks both inside and outside of Bungie have sort of figured out what's gone on. So obviously it doesn't sound like a pleasant environment for the women that have been affected by that. And it's something that no one should have to go through in the workplace or anywhere else for that matter, but especially shouldn't be treated that way by a senior employee at a company. And so it isn't good news that this is coming out. Obviously it's not helping Bungie's case at the moment, given the position they've been in, but it's had wider implications on Marathon as well, as obviously they lost the game director for the project, which they're hoping to launch in 2025. So who knows what kind of impact that may have. And beyond that, Bungie have recently taken down the Marathon Vidoc from the YouTube channel and Marathon's website, as it prominently featured Chris Barrett talking about the game. And obviously, before this news broke, Bungie didn't make the choice to remove the video. But now that it's in the news, and it's common knowledge that Chris Barrett no longer works at the company, but also the specific circumstances around that, Bungie have chosen to take those videos down, as it's just not a good look, right, to still have those videos up, given what's taken place. So that also actually potentially does a little bit of damage to Marathon from a PR point of view, which is something that it doesn't need, not least because of the community sentiment around both Bungie, but also Destiny and even Marathon itself, despite the fact that we don't know all that much about the game yet. So like I said, Bungie could do without this kind of drama really taking place. But there have been complaints previously and reports about work culture of Bungie, toxicity amongst the leadership, and Pete Parsons has come under that lens once again, given the layoffs that happened a few months ago. So very strange turn of events, but there we go. I suppose at some point in the near future, we might hear a bit more about Marathon. I'm still very curious to see what it's going to be about, but as we've seen, these games can live and die based on the perception around them. So I feel like Bungie need a little bit of good luck and a few wins in their back pocket in the next few months. But share your thoughts down below for today. That is the news that we have. So as always, I hope this video has been useful or at least mildly interesting. If it has, a rating below very much helps us out. Also, be sure to get subscribed to the channel and I will keep you posted with more Destiny content. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.